This is the Effing One Podcast, Australia's only Formula One podcast with Adam and Luke. G'day and welcome to Effing One Podcast, Australia's only dedicated Formula One podcast as we preview the 1000th Formula One Grand Prix. It's happened so fast. <laughs> the very first in May. May 13, 1950, Silverstone, England, Giuseppe Farina, the ladies' man of Napoli, won the very first race and the very first world championship in his Alfa Romeo. It was a time when only safety measures for drivers were a pair of goggles and a leather motoring cap to stop hair getting in your eyes. Pit stops consisted of sitting in the car while Nonna slowly brought over a bowl of pasta a bottle of Chianti, and a slice of her favourite famous tiramisu. That was before. You had to eat that before you could rejoin the race. That was a standard pit stop <laughs> in 1950. And to watch a GP was, well, Russian roulette. It was statistically safer to sign up for the Great War and join the front line to fight the Germans than it was to watch a GP in 1950. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my research. It's scientifically proven. So to unlock who will win the 1,000th GP in China, we say, Ni hao ma Luke, it's time to go. Is Hands down. You? Head first, big fella. Into this GP. Thanks, Paddock Pass. Ni hao. <laughs> the 1,000th Grand Prix Formula 1 Championship event. And it's a China race and it's on my birthday. Yes! If I was birthday. any happier, I'd be partaking in carnal pleasure with a consenting lady. <laughs> but we all know, it's been a few years. And with a seamless segue, we finally cracked Romania. Vi blagodarime de slushanje, which apparently means thanks for listening in Macedonian. <laughs> I've butchered what Macedonian I knew. That was pretty good. Let's uh, stop fucking about and get to the good stuff. Celebrating F1, the pinnacle of motorsport. And I'm going to say the pinnacle of motoring technology. How about an effing watch straight up? Oh, can we do that? Yeah. It seems uncustomary. We make, we make the rules. It's the 1,000th GP. Do it. <laughs> do it. So what, does, uh, what, what do we do oh, in yes. F1? So uh, F1 is F1, F1, what? F1 is a segment where we celebrate unusual facts about Formula One and you normally give us some absolute bull terrors, some rippers. So what have you got in the effing what's segment, Lucas? Well, I'm actually going to let Cyril Abitable explain the magnitude of how much Renault invest in their Formula One racing program. I have a segment which talks about extreme facts about Formula One. Can you give me an extreme fact about Formula One? For me, the most extreme fact is just 1,200 people working uh, night and day to get those two cars ready. The amount of work, the amount of dedication, the amount of commitment, just amazing, just for that result. Every, wow. Every time I How hear that, that, it gets me excited for F1. Wow. I, ch- I got choked up. I got a little bit choked up. And if F1 trickles down your legs like it does for us, then this podcast is for you. Yes. <laughs> beautiful, Luke. Poetic. Absolutely beautiful. Your birthday's coming up. Oh, it's the 1000th Grand Prix. It's all happening. Let's throw everything we've got. And it's not much, Luke. <laughs> we don't have a great deal <laughs> to offer. But we're, whatever we have, we're going to throw it against the wall. And see if it sticks. Six. What do you reckon? Yeah. It'll sl- this podcast is going to slowly slide down. Yeah, we'll see how many listeners we get after this. <laughs> well, how many we lose, Luke? <laughs> no, fuck that. <laughs> okay, so what's coming up with the podcast? Let's have a quick look. We are going to uh, we're going to chat to four-time world champion. That's not a V10 in the background. That sounds. It's actually a Renault engine. Like a two-stroke <laughs> Renault engine. <laughs> the, That's the, what that the is. Sounds of Runaway Bay. Yeah. Runaway Bay uh, cars and bikes flying past. Uh, Sebastian Vettel is going to be joining us. We're going to be talking to him on a live, pre-show. Live on a pre-show. That wow. never happens. Never happens. We only ever get him for a post. Mm. But he's going to make himself available before the race. He's in China. So we'll Skype him. We're also going to chat to Kimi Raikkonen, um, see what he's doing 
to prepare for this race, mm -hmm. probably involving vodka, I'm guessing. Uh, we're also going to chat to, have a guess, you're not going to, a blast from the past. Oh, who's this? Brendan Hartley. Brendan Hartley? Yeah. The Kiwi Kid. The Kiwi Kid. Oh, he's gracing us with his presence yeah. for this Dalton we're gonna, Grand Prix. We're going to find out what the fuck he's been up to. <laughs> Because we could be a short conversation. It, I think it's going to involve something with cleaning shitters, <laughs> but I could be wrong. We're going to find out. He's wrong. going to be on the podcast yeah. as well. And of course, I guess we should probably preview the, the Grand Prix at some oh, yeah, stage. That's fine. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. We'll preview the Chinese Grand Prix as well. So, good time to mention, Luke, before we kick things off, what we're wearing. Because yeah. the best thing for a podcast is dressing up. I love it. It's what we do, and it's not us. It's producer Pete. Producer Pete, he picks out the uh, outfits that we'll be wearing during each podcast. Um, I think he's got lazy this week. Yeah, he got a little bit lazy, yeah. especially with yours. <laughs> um, uh, it is tradition here at F1 Podcast. We must wear the native dress, native uniform of the featured race, that being China, Shanghai today. Luke, you are dressed as Bruce Lee. Wow. <laughs> Nice. Just a loincloth and you're all kind of oiled up. Yeah. Uh, a bit weird. And me, I am dressed as the monk Tripitaka from the TV series Monkey Magic. <laughs> Do you, as a kid, did you I see Monkey Magic? Magic? I know Monkey Magic, yeah. but not that much. Probably, you know. probably not so much for any other listeners, but... <laughs> was she it... McTransfer? She'd know that. He'd know that. Was it only popular in Australia? It was a Chinese... Tim Tam, Sean Kelly would know he that. He would know that, for sure. Maybe not many American listeners would know. Anyway. Oh, they would know Monkey Magic. Google. I'm dressed as a monk. You look great. Thank you. I feel spiritual and I didn't realise that your outfit, Bruce Lee, I didn't think Bruce was that chubby, but I was wrong. <laughs> but there you go. This is You're wearing it well. Bruce Lee. Yeah. And I'm a well. This I mean, a monk isn't supposed to be chubby. I so never that's... knew he let himself go, but he would have. I am. Uh, he would proof. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's just quickly preview the racetrack at Shanghai, China, with the uh, um, what is this? The PlayStation Four lap, mm. Luke. We are going to throw you in. Oh, it's up to me again. A Mercedes. Oh, and you get a good car this time. This time you get. You were in the Williams Bucket last of shit week. I was last time. That was horrible to watch. It took about four hours to do a lap. So you're in the Mercedes. <laughs> me. Talk us through the lap. Here we go. And we are what, coming into the straight now. No, no, no. Your second last corner. Second Hairpin. Corner. And then we're going to come to the last corner here. Bit difficult. You've got to keep the speed through here. And if you run wide, they'll take the lap off you. Open the DRS very early on. Cross the start finish line. Down the main straight into the long, long, long right hander. Sweeping. You would say, you, are you cheating? You've got the little lines on it, so you know where no, to... I'm not really using the lines very sure well. Sure you're not. Oh, you're spun off. Ah, oh, Luke, you're in a Mercedes. Yeah. That's it. Doesn't have a lot of rear grip. Nah, we're going to throw you back into Williams next week. That's terrible. You're not restarting the lap. <laughs> no one, it's a podcast. No one even knows <laughs> if you've gone off track, Luke. We, we did say this it. This is the most ridiculous idea we've come up with. We've come up with a lot of bad ideas. All right, so he's... <laughs> Tempting this lap again. All right. DRS open. Perfectionist. Right. Here Going we go. Going down the main street. This is, right. this is for pole position of the fuck all race. Into turn one. Yeah. Look at that. Staying on line this nice. time. Nice. Nicely done. It's a long, long, long right hander. It's a sweeper. Yeah. Into a and left. You've got to get this right on. Sweeping the left, left. And then flat out. Get it out. On the gas on now. On the gas early. Yeah. Out of turn two. It's fifth Luke gear. Kink. Sixth gear. Seventh gear. Yeah, this is where Daniel made the move. Down on Valtteri Bottas to oh, take the lead last year wasn't when we went absolutely spastic. Didn't we go mental? No one should get offended by that because that's exactly what we did. That's what we did. There's a long, long, long left hander here. Keep it on down and then break into a right hander. Oh, that's lovely breaking. Just break late. it a little bit that's more. That's Dan Ricciardo breaking. Oh, late yeah. breaking. Coming up to the left hander. Double apex. Running a little bit wide. Got a bit oversteer. Yeah. And then we head down. This is this this corner's tricky. Heavy braking, you're going uphill, and then you've got this long, long, long right-hander. Uh, Michael Schumacher made a bit of it on one of the years here. He's actually got the fastest lap, fastest race lap in 2004. What? Yeah, really? first year, yeah. Wow. So, 
down the massive straight, DRS open, big breaking area where uh, Daniel took Lewis Sebastian last year's race over a consecutive amount of laps. Get it turned in, on the gas again, into the last corner. At least I kept it on the track. That's time. nicely done, Luke. No, I'm really proud of you, buddy. This is riveting podcasting. <laughs> this is really good stuff. Right. Well, there we go. Fastest lap. You've got the fastest lap. Good job. And that's uh, that's Luke's lap, as we call that. Yeah. That's Luke driving the PS4 um, for a podcast. Yeah. Which is weird because... You could have counted the corners and... Yeah. Maybe had a bit of description, but... Uh... I think we need to th- rethink this whole mm. Luke's lap. I like the name, but the, <laughs> the hot kind of just watching... Maybe I... Watching you drive mm. doesn't always make the best podcast. Not for you. Not for me. Um, so, the weather. Yes. The weather for China this weekend. What's the forecast like? What do the you got weather for forecast. Well, the weather forecast is on Friday, it's going to be sunny. Yep. Maybe even see the sun. Through the through the smog, smog. Uh, it's going to be twelve to nineteen degrees Celsius. Yep. Um, on Saturday, warm and windy. Don't mind warm a bit of warm wind. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, partly not... sunny. Okay. Thirteen to twenty-one degrees. I was going to say not great for Sebastian. The wind. Oh no! Spins out like really wind. easily. Doesn't like the wind at all. No. Um, and then on Sunday, there could be rain in the morning. Oh, that could spice things up a bit. Mm, it'll definitely clean the track up, make it a little bit greener. Yeah. Um, and should be 11 to 18 degrees. So that's the weather. A top of 11. Should be like a weather girl. Yeah, you should be. Presenting, doing very nice. Presenting, yeah. In Bending your, over, presenting. In your loincloth. In my Bruce Lee loincloth. Bruce Lee loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. So I just lift the loincloth up to yeah. tell you what the temperature is. Yeah. How low is his balls hanging? Well... <laughs> They're a, bit, they're a bit shriveled up today. Yes. It's going to be cold. <laughs> Humidity is that. Let me give me a squeeze. Oh, look, Let me... he's in Singapore. They're nearly yep. scraping on the ground. It's moist. It's really moist today. Lots check, of... check the humidifier. Squeeze for me, Adam. <laughs> and cough. <laughs> yeah. uh, what tyres are we going to be using on the weekend? So, funnily enough, the soft, medium and hard. There we go. <laughs> but we're going... on three. The, so, the softs are the red... The medium of the yellow and the hard of the white tyres, and we're using the C4, C3, and C2. Yep. So the middle of the range, no extreme hards, no extreme softs, just everything down the middle. Yep, mm. right down the middle. Um, times of the race, uh, if we're watching, say in Australia, Eastern Standard Time. Australia Eastern Standard Time is ten past four, and welcome back to normal oh. time for New South Wales, Canberra, and. Victoria. Yeah, they're off out of daylight savings. Yeah, I mean, this is for for Australia to watch a Grand Prix that's not between one and four in the morning <laughs> is just. There's only a handful of them. Most of them, when we go to Europe and America, are you know horrible hours in the yeah, morning. I've, this is one of the few good ones. I've ditched work. Um, Did for you? the afternoon? I've, I was supposed to finish at five thirty. I'm like, there's no fucking chance that's going to happen. No. It's my birthday. I do what I want. <laughs> so not I'm going to leave at three thirty. And someone else will cover for me. Brilliant. Mm. Um, what about in what about in the state somewhere, Luke? What can they expect uh, on the west coast? On the west coast of the United States, will be eleven ten p.m. on the Saturday night. See, that's not bad. It's not even, bad for them. No, even they're, when they've got a bad, they've got a good. They're all staying up late over there. Anyway. Okay, what about the east coast? East coast of the United States is ten past two in yeah, the a.m. Yeah, that sucks. Sunday morning. Yep. But they don't get that too often. No, they very rarely. Just uh, to round off Australia, West Australia will be at 2.10 p.m. Adelaide and Darwin, you're half hour behind us, so figure that shit out yourself. Yep. London? Yep, give me London. Uh, 10 past 7 a.m. Sunday morning. See, that's not bad either. Yeah, you could have a nice, uh, what do they have, scones and... No, yeah, English breakfast. Tea. Yeah. English breakfast. Yep. Well, it's a Sunday. you got to have a full English breakfast. Full English. Black pudding. Black <laughs> pudding. Get the bacon, get the eggs. Eggs, bacon. Yep. Maybe a, gl- a cup of lard, pure <laughs> pig fat. Yum. Mm. Bit of hair on top. Goes down well. Lovely. Bit of hair. Mm. Oh. Hair of the dog. Right. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Odd taste. What about uh, France? Paris. Gay Paris. When are they expecting to watch this race? Um, It should be at 10 past 8. I've written that one down, but it's nice of you to throw it on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, get, I can do some absolute... Crackers, you. There's no way you're going to get. Go on. All right. How about uh, Kinshasa, the Democratic Republic of Congo? Big listeners of the podcast, so I'm glad they're tuning in. Hello to all our 
Republic of uh, Congo listeners. Stay <laughs> bit. That was actually ten past seven a.m. for Kinshasa. Is that right? Yeah. Jeez, that was pretty good. Good work. That was well done. I know my time zones, man. Uh, Bucharest in Romania, Luke. Bucharest. Mm. Oh, that's uh, ten past nine in the a.m. It's like some Sunday sort of, morning. Some weird time machine. I'm Rain Man. Calcutta, India. Oh shit. Um, well, finally, it'll be at eleven forty a.m. because they're on a half hour time. So eleven forty a.m. Sunday morning. You weird freak <laughs> of a man. That's <laughs> remarkable. Yeah. Greenwich Mean Time. Greenwich uh-huh. meantime. Gotcha. No, no, no. Gotcha. I, I, said, I said London before. Oh, ten past right. seven a.m. Same as Which London. is the same time as the Democratic Republic of Congo. They're on the same time. Yeah. So it should be Kinshasa Mean Time <laughs> instead Why of Greenwich. It? Fuck Greenwich. Yeah. Had it for too long. Who was Greenwich anyway? Time to pass on the flame. I don't know. Who was he? Some, some dude. Japan, uh, ten past three p.m. Yep. Um, Brazil. We've actually had a Brazilian listener. Tuned into the podcast, probably by accident. Wow. Um, And that was 3.10 a.m. You know what? When 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 the Grand Prix comes to Brazil, (laughs) that's what time we're fucking watching it. So I have no sympathy for you whatsoever. No, I've got no sympathy whatsoever. And for our friends over the ditch in New Zealand, Mm -hmm. Brendan Hartley Town, it's uh, 10 past 6 p.m. Oh. which is that's a pretty nice time to watch that's not bad, it's prime is it? time that's really good mm. well we should enjoy this because this is going to be one of the very few occasions we can actually watch it in when the when it's daylight yeah and it's your birthday yeah on sunday as well yeah so i'm coming over again and make some uh why are you cooking that's not fair it's honey chicken mate well don't I, fuck around with honey chicken that's true yeah you do nail honey chicken. Yeah. You know how to make honey. I nail it like Jesus is nailed to the cross. That's Damn right. I'll bring that. some fried rice. How about that? Yeah. I'll bring some rice? Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds, I can't wait. So we're going to watch it. Then we're going to podcast straight after the race with a mouthful of honey chicken. Mm. And fried rice. Yeah. And you never know. Maybe a Dan Ricardo back-to-back win. Oh, yeah. There's no way that's going to happen. There needs to be some collateral damage into turn one, too. Maybe Max or Kvyat or someone yeah. stupid just... Working in Spears tandem. Them all. Yeah. Max for St- Mad Max and the missile mm. just destroying the first part of the Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Oh, that's the only way Dan's gonna do any well. Yeah, that's what we need to do. That what's that's what's gonna happen. Uh got any news for us, Luke, any F one news? Um, mainly it's all about helmets this weekend. There's a lot of people doing some celebratory helmets for the thousandth Grand Prix. Commemorative, very yes. nice. Yeah. Um Grosjean, I've seen uh, Grosjean's one, which looks pretty... Like a pit stop? It's like a pit, a pit stop that goes well <laughs> on the side it, of his it helmet? It says on the side of his helmet, put front all tyres on. <laughs> Don't forget the tyres. <laughs> Don't forget the front left again. <laughs> oh, man, he's had some bad luck. All four, question mark. Yeah. Um, uh, Ricardo's got a, a retro helmet. And it says, can I go back? <laughs> Do you still want Pierre? Can I can I go can, back to Red Bull, please? Pierre would look great in a Renault. He would. <laughs> he would. But sadly, <clears throat> he's there for a couple of years. Um, and I saw a, a, a half half helmet from George Boy George Russell. Oh, or is it Curious George? I think it's Curious, Curious George. George. Curious yeah. George yeah. Russell. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a which I really like this because it's one of my favourite helmets. Half Juan Pablo Montoya. And half his own helmet. His helmet's all right, but it's much better with half of Juan Pablo on the yeah, side of it. Yeah, very cool. So um, it's homage to Juan Pablo. He's an ex-Williams driver as well. It's got a bit of blue, a bit of yellow. Colombian flag. Yep. Pretty funky. Blue, yellow, and red. Yep. Um, yeah. And, geez, Juan Pablo's a good driver. Yes, yeah, fast. Very, very fast. fast. Very fast. Yep. Any yep, other helmets? And not that I've seen... Dan's I've only look, seen those Dan's three. look good. Dan's was very... It was just very playing nice. like a grey. yeah. And a black line through the middle just to kind of take it back to I mean, what the helmets would have been like back then. Apparently, Kimi asked for an open-faced helmet for the weekend, but regulation said, I'm sorry, mate. I won't do that. Imagine all the bugs you get in your teeth. Yeah, it'd be impossible to drive like that. Yep. Um, also, the F1 test after Bahrain, uh, Mick Schumacher, Fernando Alonso. Um, How did Mick Schumacher go? He did all right. He didn't um, didn't set the world alight. Mm-hmm. His lap times in the Ferrari and the 
alpha were very similar, um, which the old adage of, you know, if, but the the alpha was on the second day, but there's the old adage of um, if they're not great drivers, you can put them in any different car mm-hmm. um, and they'll drive the same lap time because that's the, the test of their limits. Like that's the limit of their driving. So right. hopefully, maybe he just pushed the alpha a little bit harder and he didn't really push the Ferrari on the first day, given the first day was his first time in a Formula 1 car. True. So I'll, I'll give him some leeway. But and, then, and then day two might have been feeling a bit more comfortable and then really started to push that Alfa Romeo. Yeah. 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 But yeah, not top of the timesheets, nothing fancy. Mm. Yeah. So that's... that's Still be great to have him in Formula One. A brief wrap up. Even of if he year. sucks. Yeah. Straight. And record. bring Alonso back and then they can battle. And Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be so good. Um, We should do... Uh, a little segment called At, At Home, Home with, with Kimmy. Kimmy. Oh, nice. You nailed that. Did I? You really I just tried that. to fade out. I tried to fade out very quickly so that it looks like I'm like the oh, yeah. I'm the choir boy that sits there. Your mouth not was Not on moving. the priest cock, but I just pretend I'm singing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You didn't. Yeah, you, there was no sound coming out of your mouth. Yeah. It was just. That's right. Um, well, let's, you, let's you. open up the porthole because we have this very special device. I don't know what you call this. It's attached to the uh, podcasting equipment mm. and it opens a porthole into Kimmy Crazy Wild Man Raikkonen's life. Where, what he's doing right now at this very moment. Vodka time. We have no idea, mm. but we know that he's somewhere. Yeah. We know that he's somewhere. Shall we open it up? Let's hit the button, big fella. Hit the button. Done. Wow! Okay! What should I order for dinner? I'm gonna have. Uh... Okay, what's well, Shanghai? What's Shanghai famous for? Fucking Chinese food. I hate fucking Chinese food! Is there any pickled fish? Hey, waiter! Waiter, you! Hey! You! <laughs> Do you have any pickled fish? Pickled fish, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm to, what's this? To, what two bits of wood? What is this? Is this a? Uh, do I suppose it? Where's my fork? Where's my where's my knife? No chopstick. What? What am I gonna do with this? We only do chopstick. How the fuck am I supposed to eat anything with this? I'll stab you in the face with it. Jesus Christ! Ah, oh, just give me the chow mein number four, and the sweet and sour pork. Okay. Fuck it, duck. <laughs> give me the vodka. And that was. At home with <laughs> Kimmy. <laughs> lovely guy. What a lovely guy. Uh, just so friendly to people. That's it's funny that because that's exactly what he was like to me in the paddock. <laughs> it's pretty much he was identical he did not to, talk that. to you that much. <laughs> he didn't say that many words. He probably said He did look at you though. He didn't he say words. He acknowledged you and went, mm, not gonna answer that. Yeah. <laughs> but in his eyes, it would have sounded like what he just said to that Chinese waiter. Yeah. I wonder if he got a fortune cookie. Yeah, I wonder. Anyway, Kimmy Riken, what a lovely guy. Thanks yeah. for spending so much time here. And if you want podcasts, <laughs> we really appreciate it. Uh, Netflix, Luke, I just want to very quickly talk about, if we can, hmm. Netflix and how there's still a huge buzz about this Netflix uh, drive to survive. If you've not seen it on Netflix, do suggest you go and see it. It's a behind-the-scenes look at the 2018 Formula One season. Uh, some teams didn't really want to play ball. There was no behind the scenes of Ferrari. There was none at Mercedes. There was a shitload of um, Gunter. The, the, the cool teams that were willing to, you know, mm. have the cameras. Yep. Gunter Steiner, mm. the Huss American team, the Huss team. Yep. Big uh, shout out to all our American listeners, mm. fans of the um, Gene Huss team. Mm-hmm. Very fast. Yeah. Um, they were fantastic. Steiner, he's a... What a weird accent he's got. Yeah, crazy dude. Lots of colourful F-bombs. Fuck. A lot of great... I mean, he was just abusing Grosjean most of the time Yeah. in that series. But he, the thing is, he does it to his face as well. Yeah. Gunther Steiner's always been a straight shooter. Wherever he's been, he's yeah. always been very upfront and very frank. And I think it's a great way to be. Or else, you know, it's best to know from your boss where you stand yeah. than them talking behind your back and talking shit. So. Yeah, if you're going to run a Formula 1 team, you kind of need to be open and honest yeah, and transparent. Yeah, if because you, if, you're, if you're thinking, I wonder what they're saying behind closed doors, then you're probably not going to have a job. Yeah. You know, I yeah. dare say Toro Rosso wasn't telling Brendan Harley, hey, Brendan, 
Yeah. Your fucking shit. That's true. You might uh, need to up your yep. game. Yep. Um, Definitely. Gunter Steiner came out, I think, on top in that uh, series. He looked like a bloody superstar. Very popular. It raised his profile heaps. Yeah. It seems like Renault were very accommodating. Um, Cyril was great. So it has had... There's a lot of buzz about this Netflix series from people that don't normally watch Formula One. Do you think it's bringing in more people? I think it is, and I think it's bringing in people because they're interested in the personalities, they're interested in the politics, they're interested in what happens behind the scenes because there's drama behind the scenes. Yep. There's colourful language. We don't, you don't always hear at press conferences, and you know, you get to hear that. You get to hear the raw emotions of people. You get to see um, how people interact when it's not, you know, cameras and sponsors and um, audio grabs. You know, once all the press stuff stops, then the real talk starts. And I yeah. think it, Netflix showed that side of uh, F1, which, you know, to hardcore fans, they saw an insight and like, oh, yeah, it's really catering to millennials or younger generation or whatever it is. But the thing is, is it's bringing new people into F1. Um, and I think it's a great idea that people watch it. If you've got partners or friends that don't really watch F1, they're not into racing, Get them to watch the series. They're going to enjoy the series because it's a good series. It's well made. Um, it's definitely well edited. Uh, and I really think that having new people into the sport isn't a bad thing. Like they're not going to, you know, be worried about uh, which are they using the C1 or the C5 tires this weekend. But they're going to have people who are going to be possibly watching a race, maybe buying merchandise, having a favorite driver. That's not going to affect anyone else, but it's going to bring new people to a race completely concur i think it's probably the best thing that formula one's done in for a long long time i think everything they're doing on social media on through their instagram through youtube everything they're doing is increasing especially the podcast yeah like the beyond the grid podcast with tom clarkson it's i highly recommend listening to it like you're listening to us but to listen and get insights from people who are in there. You should fine. actually listen to people that know what they're talking about. <laughs> that is the tip that we're giving you today. <laughs> Murray Walker this week. You listen, you yeah, get, that it was, was a great, great interview. Great interview. He's like 93 and yeah. still got it all upstairs. Yeah. Sharp as a tack. Yeah. But I couldn't, couldn't agree with you more. That Netflix series has done wonders. For example, someone like, I've mentioned it before, my wife mm. couldn't stand Formula One. She would make me go into the man cave and watch it. Mm. That was under the stairs, wasn't it? Under the stairs, (laughs) close the door, dim the lights, the curtains. You know, she just doesn't get it. I I get that. But she sat down and watched the first episode. She was hooked. She watched every single episode on Netflix. There you go. And it's because of the personalities. Because, like, you know, the personalities are... That's why someone like Dan Ricciardo, Mm. drivers with personality... Are so important, and also you know Max Verstappen. He's got a personality. Yeah, because he might be a, a, an absolute douchebag. <laughs> he might be a dick, and everyone hates him. But he's at least he's a personality. He's yeah. not vanilla. No, he's interesting to watch. Yep. You don't know what he's going to do. He's going to punch someone. He's going to headbutt someone. He's Probably gonna shove him. He's, he's a shove professional him. shover. Yeah, but so, it's the personalities of Formula One that I think uh, a lot of people w- uh, would be interested in. And, and what they do show in the coverage is basically the stuff that. PR people, promotion sponsors, everything want to hear that it's all clean, cut, and easy. And that's why, you know, Daniel tries to change things up, tries to, you know, make it a little bit different and make it a little bit silly because he's had the questions over and over again and everyone else does it, but they answer it in the same way. And that's why they, it seems that he has a personality and no one else does. But when you watch that special, you see other sides of people. You see a fragile side of Romain Grosjean. You see yep. the hard work and dedication that people put in every day, like Carlos Sainz. You know, it's it's really mm. interesting that it it really should be shown more when they're doing yep. their press conferences, when they're doing their briefings. And I think maybe journalists need to ask some more different questions, maybe some colourful questions yep. that's going to get them away from, you know, maybe ask three normal questions that you want to hear. You, you legitimately want to know, you know, what's the strategy? Asking that question knowing full well they're not going to tell you what the fucking strategy is. Yeah, yeah. But then throw in something else, throw in something different, throw them a yep. what if, what if we try this? Yeah, rather than the stock standard questions about the technical side of yeah. the car or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's like like a, like entertainment needs good guys, bad guys. Yeah, it does. So you need to set it up. You need so, so here are the good guys, here are the bad guys, and there are good guys and bad guys in the paddock. So to highlight that, I think is really clever. Yeah. So I think if you can 
get a friend or family member to watch Check it the out. drive to survive. Uh, they'll enjoy it, and then you might be able to communicate with them on F1 and get them interested, but also grow the sport. And they they're not going to be as hardcore as what most of our listeners are. That's no. fine. But hey, what's what's more hands in the pie doesn't stop anything from us. This is probably a good time to um, throw a bit of advertising here. Uh, this podcast is proudly supported by. Netflix, proudly sponsored by Netflix. You've got your own Advertise. Netflix special coming up, don't you? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Yep. What's it called? Do the bit. Um, it's called <laughs> How to Podcast Badly with Adam and Luke. <laughs> it's going to be, and it shows the personality of the podcast. Mm. You've got Luke, who's the nice guy, and there's some dick called Adam. <laughs> and it's. Just... I, I pitched poor casting, but poor... it didn't quite work. <laughs> it's really good. That's next year's episode. <laughs> yeah. We got behind the scenes cameras of us <laughs> filming. Stop us. filming. Yeah, guys, I'm trying to podcast here. Jesus, fuck. you can see right up my loincloth yeah. from there. I'm going to punch you. I'm going to punch you. <laughs> Fucking fuck, 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 fuck. That'd be a great podcast. Great uh, TV series. Thank you, Netflix. Um, it's probably time we should speak to. Uh, we do punch above our weight, Luke. Sure, Ooh, yeah. we're not beyond the grid. We got okay. a lot of weight to punch. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not motorsport GP bloody podcast people. No, we're not that big. No. But we do have access to the biggest names in Formula One. Well, they we do. They kind of feel sorry for us, <laughs> like Pity. this guy, Sebastian Vettel, wow. four time world champion. He has taken some time out, quite unbelievably, for Effing One podcast to make Formula One great again. It's our motto. Mm. And uh, we have a chat to him right now on the old Skypey Skype machine. It's like a facsimile machine, but it's a lot better. <laughs> it's a lot better. If we were talking to Williams, it would have to be a fax machine. But we yeah. have Skype and we will talk to Sebastian right now. Okay, let's do it. Hey! Oh, g'day, Sebastian. How are you going? Hi, hi, Luke. What's going on? Oh, just it's it's nice to Jesus. see you pre pre race. Thanks for giving us some time. Look what 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 is wearing? You, you seem like you're naked. I can't see. Put the camera down so a little bit lower. Jeez, are you wearing the loincloth? I am. I'm Bruce Lee. Can't you tell? Oh my God! Fun you didn't know you didn't know that Bruce Lee had a hairy stomach. No, and so chubby. <laughs> it's uh, didn't he have like a six pack? I'm like a lava lamp when I run. Yeah, really. Yeah. Jesus, look, wow. I'll send you a slow mo. Good lord. Okay, so look, put the camera back up again. Okay. Fuck, um, well, how are you feeling heading into mm. the thousandth ever Formula One World Championship race? Yeah, it's crazy, hey. One thousand yeah. Grand Prix. Yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a really big... I'd love to win it. Mm. I would love to win the 1,000th because mm. it's a very, a very special one. So I will do my best, but it's just unt about the you know the history of the sport. I think it's great. And I think that we we have to do our best to publicize it. And I might even let the Netflixes come into my garage. No, I don't think you will. With the body oils, set up the massage <laughs> tables so I could whack, you know, give me a nice little... I think the cameras Massage. might switch off and you'll just have your own little private fun time. Oh, that sounds nice. Mm. Yeah. So uh, what have you been up to since Bahrain? Uh, so, oh, yeah, so und, I've been mostly doing the nails. Mm. Have you seen my nails? They look Check fantastic. this out. Look. Look. da da Wow. Yeah, nice. Huh? So, yeah. And I've been working out at the gym hard. Mm. Und, what's, what's your favorite workout? The training. Um, und, um the dumbbells and the bench press. Oh, really? Have you seen me do the bench press? No, I haven't. Stay no, there. Wait. No, no, no. We have don't you have seen me do the squats? <laughs> I will show you my squats. Oh. Would you uh, like a question from Adam? Yeah, um, who? You remember Adam? You actually met him in Melbourne. I don't did, know if you realised this. Did I feel him? Oh, yes. I, I, know, I know you normally don't see his face because you normally just get his I don't pics. like this guy. He's not so friendly, but, not so uh, funny. He, uh, I believe he, um, he asked you a question. And can, can I play the audio right now? Yes, okay. Do that. Sebastian, your favourite Monty Python movie? Uh, Life of Brian, I guess. Brian, I knew it. Wow. So that was you. Yeah. Um, it's been actually 40 years since The Life of Brian. Has it really? Yeah. Und, that's my favourite. Life of Brian's my favourite movie of I all time. I know, you just said so. Yeah, I know. I, I it's amazing so. how the audio changes. Like on Skype, you sound very different from... The microphone that we had in it's, the in the paddock. It's probably this condenser microphone. It's the mm. acoustics of the room. Nah. Sometimes it makes my voice sound like like this. <laughs> People think that I'm a different person, but no. In real life, I sound like 
Und the recording that you just heard with Adam. Any uh, final thoughts before we let you go? Yeah, what is this podcast called? What it's, am I doing? Uh, the effing one the fucking, I don't fucking care, look. I don't fucking I care. Out, then. Okay, thanks, Sebastian. Thanks for your time. <sighs> hey, do you want to see my Google sack? No. Okay, how about you send me a dick pic? This time I want to see it und, und la, into, into upright position. Okay. Send me the dick pickies. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, bye, nookies. Bye. I might get a black dick. Well, there we go. That wow. was that Sebastian. Was Sebastian Vettel. Mm. Wow, that was awkward, but nice that he's got so much time to uh, spend yeah. with uh, FE One Podcast. Really, good. really nice. Thank you so much. Uh, we have some nicknames we should just touch on really quickly. Last year, uh, thanks to uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Before, like, we just played the audio of you talking to Sebastian Vettel. You yeah. talked to four-time world champion. I know. How was it? It was hard to get access. Mm. He's a very busy. What did you man. do? How did you position yourself? Uh, I think I did might. Did you have, bend over? <laughs> I might have gave him a little flash of my freckle. Oh. Yeah, and I said, That'd I, get I, I might have shouted. I kind of like shouted out, went, I bleached my freckle. And he, he turned around <laughs> and he heard the words bleach and freckle. And he turned and he's, once he's hesitated, that's when I died. I died. Struck. And, yeah, I just, just got in well there. Well done. Um, that's a scoop. It is. It's uh, and then the minders came over and, you know, put you in the headlock. Pretty much. Yeah. Escort you, drag Sorry, me out of there. Sorry, nicknames. Yeah, nicknames. So last year we, uh, as voted by the FE1 podcast uh, listeners, mm-hmm. um, on the uh, Twitter page, mm. voted for their favourite nicknames. A lot were suggested. Mm-hmm. Awesome nicknames mm-hmm. like. Let's recap a couple of the beauties, shall we? Uh, Lewis Hamilton was douche canoe. He was. Dan Ricardo was Mr. Personality. The Personality Ricardo. Um, Max Verstappen was Mad Max. Mad Max. And Bottas was the other Finn. The other Finn. Because that's he didn't do anything. He just basically couldn't overtake or anything. So this year we've um, done the same thing. We've thrown it out onto the Twitter sphere mm. and also Instagram, which mm. we're also on now. F1 Podcast Instagram. And the results are in. We did highlight them last week, but quickly just go over the winning nicknames for the drivers for this year, Luke. And our mission now is to try to remember them and use them in conversation because <laughs> I keep thinking of the old ones. I do. And there's part of me that thinks some of the old ones were better than the new ones. Mm. And we might open it up. You know, if you're not happy with the new ones, we can revert to some of the old ones. Um, but we'll, we'll see how we go. Okay. Um, Lewis Ham Sandwich Hamilton. Daniel, Mr. F1 Ricardo, Max, Angry Kid Verstappen, Pierre, Gassy Gasly, Lando, Chuck Norris, Carlos, Minifon Signs, Kevin, Mags, Magnuson. I do like that That's one. good, isn't it? Yeah, very Aussie. Lance, Silver Spoon, Stroll, uh, Romain, Leave Me Hanging, Grosjean. Oh, nice. Sergio, The Podium Thief, Perez. Mm-hmm. Robert, Bobby K, Kubica. Curious, George Russell. Kimi, Vodka Time, Raikkonen. <laughs> Antonio Pizza Delivery Giovinazzi. I think we could change him to like maybe like Luigi or Mario. Yeah, that would be better, wouldn't it? Like Antonio Luigi. Mario or Antonio yeah. Luigi. Mario. Antonio Luigi, I think, sounds Luigi. better. Luigi. Yeah, and do that voice. Luigi. 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 Yeah, nice. Antonio Luigi Giovinazzi. Danny Torpedo Kvyat. Sebastian Sauerkraut Vettel. Alexander oh. Tie Fighter Alban. Valtteri, fuck you, Bottas. Mm. The talented Nico Hulkenberg. The chosen one, Charles Leclerc. Oh, good ones. There's some good ones in mm. there. Chosen one, like that. Sauerkraut. Mm. Sauerkraut's good. That's a really good but one. But though Finger Boy is it's yeah, a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. So they're the new nicknames. They are the we'll, nicknames. We'll do our very best. I'll try. To um, use those nicknames in general conversation when we're thinking of those drivers. We'll do our best. We'll do <laughs> we'll our try. best. We'll try. We'll try. Um, we should probably have a chat to a man. I got a little surprise. You're not aware of this, but I did organise this earlier. Mm. I tracked down a former driver whom you were very fond of last mm. year. I did make the early prediction that he wouldn't be returning this year, mm. but that unfortunately came true. Mm. It's Brendan Hartley. I thought you were going to say Stoffel Van Dorn. Stoffel. <laughs> Great to see Stoffel too. Another one that I really liked. You and did like Stoffel. Departed. Yep. But Brendan, a uh, bit of a soft spot for you. You're a big fan of his. Yeah. The Kiwi driver, terrible luck last year. Mm. Just every time there was accidents at Toro Rosso, he was involved. He 
had a lot of issues. Uh, I didn't get invited back, no. unfortunately. It's a shame. Um, and we didn't know where he went. We didn't know what he's doing this year, so it'd be nice to find out. You tracked him down. We well did done. track him down. We got some audio, and it went a little something like this. Hello, Brendan. It's Margaret at uh, Centrelink. Thanks for stopping by. It's been hard to track you down. Been emailing and calling you. Yeah, I've uh, been pretty busy. Have you? I was going to ask. That's why I'd love to get to have a chat. Sit down. I'd love to know what you've been up to since the last Formula Formula One, wasn't it? Yes. Driving the cars. Yeah, I was. Uh, I raced in Sebring. I did a double stint. I did a race on a Saturday, then a race on a Sunday. Did all right. But it's been a bit quiet in the last month. No. Oh. Yeah, I've had uh, some side gigs with Porsche. Oh, driving the Porsche? Well, that's not what, what you do. It's, wait a minute. No. Cleaning toilets. Well, yeah, I've been cleaning the shitters again. Um, and those Germans, they're very meticulous with their cleanliness. Oh, they are, aren't they? I was also, I've also been teaching drivers for driver ed. Driver... Oh, like racing car techniques or driving mentoring, that sort of thing? No, 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 just as a safety officer teaching kids around road rules at the local school. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I've also got a gig with Ferrari Drive and the F1 Simulator. I think it's a PlayStation 4 and they're just being cunts about it. I think if I do really well, um, I could be like Kvyat and I could be the comeback Kiwi. Oh, that's nice. You think maybe there'll be a spot open back up at Toro Rosso? Well, I don't care where it is as long as I get back to driving a car fast. Yeah, it's not easy. I'll tell you what, though, while you're here, mm. we do have some dirty shitters. Would you like to go clean these toilets? Mm. Of course. Give you fiver. Oh. All right. I'll get to the shitters. Thanks. Brendan Hartley away! Thanks, Brendan, Formula Formula One driver and wonderful shitter cleaner. Thanks for visiting Centrelink. Bye. Oh, well, that was nice. Hmm. Nice to get a, a little bit of audio <laughs> of Brendan's turning back, <laughs> turning back up to see Margaret yeah. at the Centrelink office. I miss Brendan. Gee whiz. I missed that segment. Yeah. What was it? Finding Top- a job with, with Brendan. Brendan. Top notch segment, that one. <laughs> Top notch. There's some good material in this podcast. Oh, crack Good material. It's a podcast that keeps on giving, this one. <laughs> um, oh, predictions, Luke. Predictions, we so. need to get into the predictions. Oh, shit. You're, what's, a, what's you're a six up. Six. You're, we're two races in. Yeah. So by the end of this season, you should be about, what's that, 60 points? <laughs> about one of the winning margin from last year for me, wasn't yeah. it? 60 points? So just to clarify, we're we're tipping the drivers in the same team. So it's a head-to-head. Yes, qualifying and race. Right, yep. Okay, so let's have a quick look very quickly at this week's race. We need to throw our predictions out there, big fella. Yep. Firstly, um, would Mercedes. You, want to, you want to rattle them off? Yeah, Mercedes-Benz. Yep, you're going to go Lewis or Valtteri. I'm going to go... Oh, you know what? I'm going to go Valtteri. Wow. I'm going to throw it out there. And I'm going to go Lewis Hamilton. It's a no-brainer. You better not screw it up. Yep. Ferrari. I know who I'm choosing. I'm going to go Leclerc. Yeah, me too. Really? For the Are rest you? of the season, mate. Really? Yeah. He's driving well. Um, so we're going to go Red Bull Racing, Max Verstappen and Pierre Gasly. I mean, it's got to be... Gassy Gasly. Poor old Gassy Gas, man. Oh, he's, he's, not, struggling. he's struggling, isn't he? How much longer can he keep this up before he gets demoted and Kvyat bumped up? Uh, it's messy. It's messy. Yes, Verstappen for me, please, and mate. And for me. Mm-hmm. Renault. Oh, boy. Again, Dan's in a similar posi- a situation to and a predicament mm. uh, to the gas man. Just not used to the car. He's kind of gone. Well, he's had to make do with a shitty Renault after driving that bloody thing on rails last year. He did out-qualify, and he was well ahead of Nico Hülkenberg. Before that shitty... St- before the shitty strategy, strategy. really screwed Correct. him up. Correct. Well, you know what? Let's go a little bit of Dan. He did the testing at Bahrain. Yep, he did post-Bahrain. So he I'm hoping that the extra time in the car has been beneficial. He's getting used to it now, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. I'm going to go Dan Ricciardo. Yeah, I'm going to go Dan as well, as much as I do like... Uh, the talented Nico Hulkenberg. Yeah, he's just too German for me. Yeah. He's just a bit German. Mm. He's a bit, you know. I'm kind of envious of a his A bit hair. dull. 
Germans are, you know, always early and you know, always bang on time for meetings. Mm. Clean, you know, cleanliness like, you know, you've mentioned earlier. Oh, yeah, Brendan. German shitters. toilets. But uh, they're so boring. Next up, the Haas holes. The Haas holes. Love the American team, Haas. Mm. Bloody love it. And You're going to go Romain Grosjean or Kevin Mags, Magnussen? Magnussen would be the clever option, the mm. smart option, but I'm going to go for Romain because he's heart. such a nice guy. Going with your heart. I'm going Kev. Yep. Big Kev. I can afford to be nice. I'm excited. I can you, afford to you, give a few away. You you are very generous. Thank you. McLaren. You got wow. mini Fonz. Wow. I mean, little mini Fonz. He's he drove well, but I'm yeah. gonna have to say Lando Chuck Norris. Lando Chuck Norris, the young he did bloody good. He's a bit of a geezer. I was, me. I was this close to actually revoking Charles Leclerc's Lickett and Sendit award and giving it. After I saw, like it wasn't in the telecast, but after a few days afterwards, they showed a, an overtake of... Oh, the outside. Around the outside. Yeah, yep. Lando Norris. Beautiful move. Beautiful move. Sweet. Opportunistic. Found himself on the ripple strip and just held it around the outside of, I think it was Gasly. Yep. That was bravo. Great move. Great move. Scary to think that, that uh, he actually thinks he hasn't been that aggressive mm. and he needs to be more aggressive. What's what's he going to be able to pull out when he's more aggressive? Jesus. He's bloody good, this guy. Yep. I'll go Lando Norris. You're going Lando? The young Brit. Bit of a geezer. Not mean. I'm going to go ooh, Lando as well. Yeah. Alfa Romeo, Kimi Raikkonen, and Luigi. And the pizza salesman, the pizza yep. delivery boy. I'm going to have to go for the vodka, vodka man, Kimi vodka Raikkonen. Vodka time. I just don't know how long Giovinazzi... Is going to yeah. stick around. I He's not I great, is he? Who would they put in his place? Well, Brendan? Nick Schumacher? Brendan Hartley? Bre- <laughs> Get him back in there. <laughs> Clean the toilets at the Alfa Romeo garage? <laughs> hey, these toilets are dirty. Who, who we could, need Brendan who Hartley replace, here. Who could replace Giovinazzi? You come to my toilet the day I did a gigantic <laughs> shit. On my daughter's wedding. On my daughter's wedding. It's backed up, you motherfucker. Clean the fucking things. So, and now we're up to Racing Point. Because we clearly oh. both went to Kimi Raikkonen in that one. Lance Stroll and Sergio. Sergio. Oh, man. It's such a tough one. Mm. Lance has been driving pretty well, but I'm going to have to go for Sergio. Sergio Better driver. Perez. I'm going to go Sergio as well. Yep. Somewhat playing it safe. Mm-hmm. Torosso, Alexander Alban, who got points. In the previous race. Talented driver. And Kvyat, who made a couple of little errors. Flying under the radar. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go for Albon. I'm a, I'm a fan. I like this kid. He's very good. He came runner-up to Leclerc in Formula 3, I think it was. Mm. He's a good driver. So I'm going to go with Daniel Kvyat, the, the torpedo. Torpedo. Mm. Yep. Okay. Lastly, but, well, really last. Talk about personalities in Formula 1 earlier. Mm. There's a man without one. Isn't there? Kvyat. <laughs> no personality at all. There should be... I got more out of him than I got from Kubita, but unfortunately I forgot yeah. to press record. The, I think like, you, I think you came up with this last week, mm. the personality test. Before you get a seat in Formula 1, there has to be a personality test. It's part of the super license. It's part of the super license. Maybe Can they you... should... <gasps> what? Gonna... No, I've thought of an idea. You can hear it in the next podcast, not this one. Oh, brilliant. Making it fun great again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The personality test. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. Somewhat. And it's tied in with Netflix because they and, and Liberty Media because it sells. Personality sells. Yeah. Boring Russians don't. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We uh, tr- uh, transgress slightly. Yeah. Are you writing down your idea, aren't you? So you don't yep. forget it. Getting it right nice now. Um, racing point. We've done racing. Now we're up to Williams. Point. We're up to Williams. Oh, jeez. Um, it's going to have to be Russell. Russell? George. GR. Baby Eyes Russell. I'm going to go with Bobby K. <laughs> Robert Kubica. Yep. I think he'll do well. Yeah, so that is the predictions. That's predictions. We'll find so out. There, there is a few points of difference. Yeah. Torosso Williams, uh, Haas Holes, and Mercedes. Luke, do you know when... How do you distinguish when you're a fan of F1? How do you know you're a fan of F1, Luke? Well... Nice little segue there. You Thank did that you. well. Thanks, mate. Um, you know you're an F1 fan yeah. when mm-hmm. you are mid-coitus. <laughs> you are with your lovely lady or man or, you know, this this generally or has to be a man. For Luke, hand. My hand. <laughs> Mrs. Palmer and her five lovely daughters. That when, when you 
are at your end, when you're about to climax, when you're about to finish. What is going on here? As you finish... I'm feeling so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> as you finish... No. You pull out... Oh, come on! And you go, the champagne! In the voice of Bob Constantinurus. Oh, I see. <laughs> what you're doing, you're relating the champagne bottle. On the podium. <laughs> That's when you know you're in a... F- champagne! F1. And you just fucking spray it everywhere. That's... <laughs> I've never thought of Formula One. When I'm in that moment, but that's nice. You're not an F1 fan, then, mate. <laughs> I've never. Now all the listeners are gonna go. I'm gonna try that next time. And if you do, <laughs> if you do, no one's gonna do that. If you do that, can you do me a favor? Just let me know what you miss. Take, take a snap of yourself. <laughs> no, <laughs> just send it into everyone podcast, and we'll put send it on it the Instagram Adam. page. Send it to Adam. <laughs> um, no. Just I want to know what you miss. Superimpose Luke's face on it. I want to know their reaction when you go the champagne. Because <laughs> um um, one of Ross Noble thing he goes bam and the dirt is gone. <laughs> oh. I know oh, it- no, no Ross Noble thing was he um his friend uh, who was a uh, was the lady in the in the part of the sexual. So who's who's Ross Noble for those who don't know? Ross Noble is a stand up comedian from the UK. He's okay. from Newcastle. Very very funny man. Mm. Um, he said he was getting a phone call um, from his best friend who had just slept with the bloke, and she just wanted to know if most guys do this. And as he was getting closer, he's like, "Show me, show me, show." And at the point of climax, he goes, "Show me where your mother lives." And she just rang him to go, is this really what men do? <laughs> and to have that uh, level of head to go, I'm going to say this. <laughs> so, champagne! And who would have thought it's been three years since you last had a champagne? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. Oh, <gasps> boy. But now it makes sense, though. It makes sense. How else do you know if you're a Formula One fan? <laughs> is there any others? No, no, no! You get one a week. I'm not. I'm not giving you more. Oh wow! I they're just good. thought of this beforehand. They'll be that good every time. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, guess what? We've got some fo- making Formula One great ideas, Luke. We do. That's what we do. I mean, Everyone One Podcast is built on making Formula One great again. It's our motto. We've got it in Latin on our coat of arms. We'll probably get it tattooed. Probably get it tattooed on our person somewhere. <laughs> Or just initial it on your cock. Yeah, everyone podcast does attempt mm. to attempt to make Formula One great again. We've made the trip we to Liberty try. Media. We, we really try. We're very trying. If nothing else, we are trying. We turned up to Liberty Media headquarters. We thought it was Liberty Media in America with a briefcase Wasn't. sealed, delivered to the door of Liberty Media with wonderful suggestions on how to make Formula One great. The shopping bag challenge. Yeah, shopping bags on the rearview mirrors with eggs. And if you broke one in qualification, you have a time penalty. Genius. Mm. Reverse parking challenge. Lewis Hamilton, you're a good driver. You're fast. Can you reverse park this Mercedes Benz into this tiny little space? You can't. Well, minus points for you. One of the predi- time penalty. One of what, what we wanted was minimum driver weight. What happened? Minimum driver weight. They that, listened. That was in the sealed envelope. That was in there. That was one of yeah. our many suggestions from last year. The the people on Twitter didn't like it. <laughs> no. They didn't vote for it. No. They preferred the smashed eggs and broken milk of the shopping they bag were challenge. very popular. But Another very popular one was the eating the native dish of that host country on your lap. While qualifying. While qualifying. Mm. The silly ones seemed to make it into the finals. Mm. The, the smart ones that were actually implemented. Clearly, didn't. we need to just make this podcast more silly and less of okay. substance. Which I think we've done. More silly? <laughs> Champagne! Champagne! Champagne for everybody! <laughs> More silly? <laughs> More silly. Oh, we'll do our best. Yeah. We'll try. We'll try. Well, let's try now, shall we? So, we've got some more... What's your uh, ideas? ...one podcast uh, suggestions. Uh, let me check. I wrote it down somewhere. Let's I don't even so. know if I... Did I write it down somewhere? Or do somewhere? you want me to do mine uh, while you rethink Oh, of... no. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Okay. So... We're always looking to get more, like the Netflix series, mm. 
Drive to Survive, get new listeners, new people interested in Formula One, relating that Formula One to, you know, normal life. Well, what about we go back in time for the 1,000th race this weekend in China, Mm -hmm. the 1,000th Formula One race in history. Mm. We have a retro, retro, a retro race. A retro round. We go retro style for one race. Mm -hmm. We have the drivers in their 1950s outfit, like Fangio, Mm -hmm. with their little leather cap and their goggles. They drive the original cars. Mm. They drive the same cars. Same cars? Yeah, why not? Let's go same cars. Let's pull them out of the museum. Let's put a V10 engine in it. <laughs> They've got the same specs. There's no aerodynamics to this thing. It's heavy. It's it's a death box. Yes. It's going to kill someone, no doubt. Um, and instead of, you know, barricades mm. and cement and all that sort of barriers, we've just got hay bales. And humans. And humans. The way they used to do it. <laughs> Old school Luke. Yep. If a driver didn't lose their head, he would at least kill three spectators in a, you know, at in a race. At least three. At minimum. Minimum. What do you think? I like the retro idea. The death part? Does that bother you? The death part concerns me of your <laughs> mental state. Unnecessary, maybe. No, I mean, you know, as, as, you know, but I'm thinking also... You know, Netflix, the new series, has attracted a lot more people, so... Yeah, it's, it's now gone from Netflix to snuff film. <laughs> it's a snuff fest. And, you know, we might lose a couple of... Drivers, But there'll be new, listeners, new spectators yeah. that have been attracted by Netflix mm. who don't know much well, about UFC Formula 1 anymore. Well, UFC is pretty popular at the moment, and that's just bloodshed. Maybe we incorporate UFC. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Oh. Hello. This is crazy. This so is then, retro UFC. So then the... the it's just... Yeah, to qualify... It's a UFC fight. They mm. put put in a cage. Mm. Okay, this is getting more and more ridiculous. Yeah, I, I like your retro. Like, give a retro livery. It got silly. Drivers go retro. All the team kit goes retro. And you're talking like in... a, a 1920s voice. Yes. Hey. And, and he goes around the outside. Lewis Hamilton. Good luck out and, there. And they make their own sound effects because they don't have... Yes, because the cars are so slow. Yeah, not yeah. like the one that was in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Because, you know, our cars don't sound like that anymore, but if if we make the noise for it, the people at home won't have a clue. That's true. Mm. Exactly. It's like in cricket where they used to just get the pencil and the piece of wood to make the sound of the ball hitting the bat. That's what they used to do on radio. Is that right? Yeah. To paint the picture. Yeah. They go, okay, and the ball's a good delivery, and that's a big shot. And he goes... Yep. And to I'll... Bradman and... Yep. And people would think, because yeah. that puts the picture in their head, oh, that's... Him hitting the ball. Yeah, and he's just driven it through colours. Well done, Don Bradman. Wow. Yeah, that's what they used to do. Um, my idea, I like your livery. I like the retro idea. Thank you. Um, and I think they should do it at least once a year. Maybe at Silverstone because it is the home, home of, of Formula, Formula One. One. Um, my idea, which some people might call it crazy. Mum mm-hmm. mm, won't. But the idea is... And I thought of it just before the podcast. Does it have actually. anything to do with rotisserie lamb? No. Okay. No. Carry on. <laughs> you can see you've got your... Got your so you're all ready. Well, as soon as you mention your mum, Luke's mum, I think of roasted lamb. Straight into She's lamb. such an amazing cook. Anyway, yeah. sorry, carry on. Sorry. To, uh, to interrupt your lamb dreams. Yes. Um, my idea... Champagne! Dear, champagne! <laughs> That's the champagne! Um... <laughs> Silly. Um, but fuck, if someone does it, it'll be so funny. Um, the idea is, because we have different spec tyres, um, but they all, all four tyres must be on. Why don't we go, all right, we might have softs at the front yeah. and mediums at the rear to spice up oh. real strategy changes. So MotoGP, you can go a soft and a hard. You can go a medium, medium. You can go hard, hard. You can do whatever combination you want. Wow. But why doesn't F1 go, right, you like can put, mandatory, like it's a it's a law. You, no, no law, no, no law. It just want. opens it up. So if you want a medium front right tire and a hard front left tire, so maybe there's a lot of right-handed corners, then you up. just to try and change up the strategy so the cars can push a little bit harder throughout the race, and also just you know testing on Fridays. They're probably like, oh yeah, we kind of know what we need to do after about ten to fifteen laps, and. They just work on different runs. But hey, if you throw in a lot of few, like so many variables in the tyre strategy, 
Yeah. That'd be uh, really interesting. I like it. Mm. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. I've got nothing more to add to that. That wasn't even crazy. I'm like, I need to drop Mike. I'm done. That wasn't crazy at all. I was expecting, I don't know, maybe something to do with champagne. Maybe a fish down the trousers. A fish down the trouser. <laughs> not bad. It's I not like for, it. like you wouldn't see the fish. The only people that would know about the fish is the drivers. Or a scorpion, some sort of deadly animal in your pants. <laughs> On you get a scorpion in your pants yeah. and you just have to negotiate the race. <laughs> Getting stung. Well, there's something in the footwell and you're not quite sure what it is. Like Ooh, where they put their yeah. feet and they don't know what it is. They say, look, there's something pretty deadly in there. We just can't tell. And it never is. It's no, it's never. It just gives them a bit of no. fear. It's like that movie Conan the Barbarian where they go, put your arm, like there's a snake in one mm. of the holes. And, and it's uh, just Arnie's know, cock. It's just Arnie's <laughs> cock. <laughs> it's like a giant snake, yes. Yeah. But it just spits at you with champagne I didn't at the know end. you could pump iron for cock, but yeah. you did it. Before we go, we really should... Thank Mrs. Luke Hi, for mom. this wonderful spread. Luke's mum, your mum, known as mom. Luke's mum. And I was disturbed the other week to find out she has a name. That's she not does. Luke's mum. She does. I'm not going to mention it no, again. Don't, because it ruins the whole... I mean, for me, it's like... She's Luke's mum. She's still Luke's mum. She's like a god. She's like a, one of the Greek gods. <laughs> don't look at her. Avert like, your eyes. No, no, you don't look. You no. never eye contact. No. It's always down. She'll turn you to a pillar of salt. <laughs> She would, and she, like, it's like a Japanese thing, you bow lower. The yeah. more The lower you bow, the more respect. Yeah. She's very much like that. So she's put on she a She always beautiful... kicked me in the back of the knees just to make sure that there was respect. Yeah. Just get down on your yeah. knees, you shit. Yeah, yeah, very harsh. Firm but fair, Luke's mm. mum. Yeah. Very firm but fair. And a great cook. What has yeah. she cooked up today, Luke? Uh, what have we got? Some Chinese treats. Some dumplings. Dumplings, sweet and sour. We've got chicken legs. That's a duck. Chicken that's feet. That's duck. Just a hanging raw duck. That's she raw. hasn't quite cooked that yet. No, so that's a shame. Don't dig into that. No, that's probably deadly. Yeah. Um, it's like duck jerky. She's just duck It's in jerky. the process of duck jerky. Yeah. So this is just the drying out period. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> that's so nice. And that looks like a bit of and, old... Uh, You've got a fortune cookie there. What, fortune is that? Cookie. what does that say? Crack it open. Yeah, let's do that. Let's have a little look. It says, try and do a better podcast next time. <laughs> try and make this podcast slightly funnier. Oh, I've got one. Oh, here we go. Crack it open. Here we go. Oh, very funny. Did you do this? No. Did your mum. That was your mum. Oh, you're getting three more years of being single. Go fuck yourself. Ah, <laughs> oh, Loki. Oh, single champagne showers for you, my friend. <laughs> the showers continue. It's going to be a very long shower. The champagne. Luke, why is the champagne in here? I can't, man. <laughs> um, make sure you get hold of us for comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Probably the last hour of this podcast. We apologize. <laughs> um, but thanks for listening. And uh, check us out on uh, the Effing One podcast Twitter page and Instagram as well. Yep. Looking forward to this race. Happy birthday, Luke. Well, it's too early. There's no point. We're going to be podcasting on your birthday. Yeah, sure will. This Sunday, mm -hmm. they'll be singing, they'll be feasting and dancing, and you're going to be cooking honey chicken. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing the rice, mm -hmm. and hopefully Dan Ricardo picks up another win. Oh, yeah. Uh, although I'm not quite as enthusiastic as... Yeah. I'm enthusiastic about honey chicken. Me too. Um, see you then. Bye now. Bye. <laughs>